Okay, today we're revisiting Kube Prometheus. There's been some changes to the JSON net format. So if you're deploying Kube Prometheus in your cluster straight off the master branch of the Kube Prometheus Git repository like I am, you're going to hit this issue when you try and build from your old JSON net file. And that requires that we make some modifications to it to perform a migration to the new style format. So I'll, I'll just show the error that you will be hitting if you are deploying like I am. So if we try and build from our old JSON net file, we can see that we get this error that it can't open and import the Kube Prometheus Libson net file. So this requires that we perform a migration. So we'll just open up VS Code. So we can have the two side by side. So the one on the left here is my old JSON net file. And we can see I've added in my custom dashboards there, for example. And the one on the right is just the example JSON net file straight from the Kube Prometheus Git repository. So what we need to do is we need to go through and make the same modifications to this example file and then rebuild our manifest from this new file. So I just found that it was easier to use the example one than it is to modify my existing one. You know, you might do it the opposite way, but I'm just going to show from the example what we would do. So what, we, what we've got here is we come under this common namespace and we press enter. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to add in our custom dashboards, for example. So I'll just copy it from another window. And here we'll paste that in. So we do Grafana dashboards plus colon colon, and then we open up some parentheses and we put in the information that we want in, inside those parentheses. Now we want to go down to the next line and we want to add in a section for Grafana. So we come over in line with Grafana here and we go Grafana plus colon colon, open up our parentheses again. And now under here we want to put in some, some information specific for our Grafana deployment. So one of the things I'm, I'm not doing in this old one is I'm not setting the password for Grafana. So that means every time the pod dies or restarts for any reason, for example, if I'm doing an upgrade and the pod migrates to a different node, then I have to reset that admin password, which is quite annoying. So what we can do is we can define any password we want within the JSON net file, and that will create a secret within Kubernetes that is used for that password. And we need to put that under the Grafana section. So what we do here is, I'm just gonna copy it again from another screen, come in here, paste that in. So we add config, section, security, and then admin password, and we're just setting a random password there, which we can see in this case is password. Then we want to add in a section for our dashboards. So again, with the dashboards plus colon colon, then we're putting in the, the two dashboards that we're going to be importing, which are the ones that were defined earlier. And the other thing we want to define is, in my last video, I was editing the manifests that are generated from this JSON net operation. So when we run the build on this JSON net file, it creates the manifest. And then I was editing it and adding in some additional scrape secrets. Because not everything that I'm monitoring is in Kubernetes. I have two servers behind me that I'm monitoring and my PFSense router and a couple of other things that I need to add additional scrape secrets for. And we can do that as well in, inside this JSON net file. So, go down and close that one off. Okay, so under this one here, we're gonna add a section for Prometheus now, so Again, just copying from another screen. So we will add in our Prometheus section. So what we're doing there is we're modifying the spec in, inside the manifest file and we're adding in additional scrape secrets and with the scrape secrets that we would like to configure. Okay, so we add in our Prometheus section and we add in our additional scrape configs and then we just want to make sure we've got all of our parentheses closed off so that looks fine now. So now what we'll do is we will build from that. I'm going to use a slightly different one because I have a, an actual password in it but I've just made sure this mirror is the one I will actually be using. So we'll go back to the terminal and we will build from our new one now.
and we can say we haven't got that error now when we run that. Let's move this over here. So now it's finished. If we go into the manifest directory and we be our Prometheus, Prometheus. YAML. We can see here that our additional scrape configs have now been added to that. So that, that's super handy. I don't need to manually go through and do that now. The only thing I am still manually doing is I'm modifying the node selectors, which I, I can probably translate into JSON net format. I think I only really need to do it for the node exporter though, so that might be something I'll look at in a future video. But the problem is I have Raspberry Pis, which obviously aren't x86. And if it deploys node selector on those nodes, then it fails because it's compiled for x86 instead of ARM64. So I can either compile my own node exporter and make sure that gets deployed on the um, Raspberry Pi, or I can just modify these node selectors and make sure they only go on AMD64 nodes instead of ARM64 nodes. It's neither really here nor there, so I, I might look at that in a different video. So. There's a lot of handy information actually on the Git repo for doing this migration. So if we have a look here, this web browser. So this is the documentation for the migration examples. So as we scroll down through this, we can see here we have, we can see that we have an example of the legacy to the new format. And it actually breaks it down into different sections, which is quite handy. So I used this document for performing my migration. I found it easier just to edit the example JSON net file and then add in these new things. The other thing that's good about this is there's actually some examples of doing some pretty neat things that might be helpful if you're trying to achieve similar things in your environment. For example, modifying the ingress, um, adding in different rules, for example, modifying Prometheus, adding in labels, specific labels to the deployment, etc., etc. And at the top, if we actually open the new format, this is full of great examples if you need a hand to modify anything. For example, etcd, you can add in the, the certificates. Um, alert manager, we can add in new rules, alerts, webhooks, things like that for alert manager. One of the webhooks that I've added was speaking to AWX, so Ansible Tower, the, the upstream community version of Ansible Tower. I was making webhooks to AWX and sending myself telegram alerts, which is cool. Um, that's something I want to redo, so we might do a different video on that as well. But this is how you would do that. You can go through and add rules for Alert Manager. You can add in um, different Prometheus rules, for example. So we scroll down. We've got Node Exporter. We can add in different things for Node Exporter. Yeah, there's lots of helpful information in this example file if you're trying to do some cooler things with your environment. So just a quick video, but I wanted to make a follow up to my previous Coop Prometheus update video since this is now different and that video will no longer work as, as I've described there. So from this point, once you have built based on this new JSON net file, it would just be a matter of rolling out those manifests. In my case, I'm using Argo CD, so I'll push them to the Git repo and have Argo roll it out. Or you could just do Coop CTL apply on your manifests and setup directories. So I hope that's helpful if you've hit this issue and you're trying to overcome it, that's what you need to do. Um, and hopefully these example files and give you some other cool things that you can do in your cluster and make it more usable and, and more convenient for you.